Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Um, today, we have a great topic and an even bigger guest. Um, so today, I just want to talk about what we're going to be talking about, um, and then I'll introduce you guys to Denise. So the, the topic today we're going to talk about, guys, is the fine line between automation and personalization when engaging with or prospecting the C-suite. And when I was talking to people, I thought, who should I bring on the show to talk about the C-suite? And there's only one person I thought of, and that was Denise Champagne, who I met, as we just mentioned, about a year ago um, in Ottawa, in person, even though we spoke on the phone a few times. Um, but a little about Denise before we get started, guys. Denise has 35 plus years of salesmanship and business owner and management experience with a focus on B2B sales and prospecting in a variety of industries such as aviation, automotive, CPG, etc. He's also owned and operated a call center and has trained over a thousand agents. Um, one more thing about Denis, he has helped many clients improve and optimize their sales prospecting and marketing processes. Um, first off, thank you for coming, Denis. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Sean. It's always a great pleasure to be with you, man. Perfect. So, you know, the reason why I wanted to bring Denis was, you know, as everyone's prospecting, a lot of people I speak to, a lot of clients here, um, I was always talk about, you know, how do you prospect to a director versus a VP versus C level? And what Denis is going to kind of talk to us about today is how specifically you have to engage with the C level. And that's so important because um, I would say probably 95% of the time or even 100% of the time, the C level person is the one that's going to sign that check or make that decision. So you have to know a, a very specific way how to talk about it. And before we get started, I kind of want to just kind of like explain, you know, personalization and sales automation and automation in general. So, you know, automation is the process of streamlining manual, tedious and time consuming tasks in the sales process. So your sales team can focus less on admin and more on selling. And obviously personalization you know, sometimes referred to as one-on-one -on -one marketing is so important. So let's just jump right in, Denis. You know, I guess, you know, first off, let's just tell me about why you believe the C-level is its own entity and you have to really learn how to prospect to them. Well, there are many reasons, but the first thing is that they're pretty smart guys and ladies. They are, uh, they have very clear ideas of what they need to accomplish. They're accountable to a board of directors, to stakeholders. Uh, so they deal with very strategic and very insight-based uh, decisions, which allows them to, A, themselves benefit from it. They are also bonus uh, incentive, incentivized, but they have very uh, clear responsibility line with the CEO. Uh, so they report, so they're accountable like you and I are. And so, you have to be extremely relevant. Your timing's got to be impeccable and you got to have some maturity in your discourse with these people. Otherwise they will pick up very, very quickly. They're very smart and they hear a lot of different stories. So you got to be clear. Yeah. So when, when looking at prospecting to the C level, I guess, you know, what is the objective when you're engaging with the CC? Like, what are you really trying to get out of that? And, and I guess, how do you get that out of that C-suite, that C-level person? Well, I mean, for a long, for the longest time I've been coaching and I'm actually coaching six reps in Australia and in Asia Pacific these days. And it's all about, uh, the first thing I asked them to write out in more detail than they're used to, the visceral understanding of the problems that they are facing. Really, know the problems better than them. I did a, a little recording on that. Become the expert in the problem. So that when you um, engage with them in the first few seconds, you can hit, you know, people like you talked about earlier, three to five seconds, you got to engage. So you have to bring to bear real quickly in a very mature tone, something that they can relate to and say, oh, I can trust him by his voice. As you know, I talk a lot about voice. Even if it's an email, it's got to be based on something that resonates with it that matters to them. Yeah. And it's, it's funny you say that because it was actually about two hours ago, I received, um, I received a cold email. And the email in the first four sentences, it said, we, four times, we can do this. We have done this. 
we are going to do this for you. And what we were just talking about Danny, a few minutes ago was I always say that first three seconds is the most important in an email. And you shouldn't talk about yourself. You should talk about what is that problem? What is that pain or what is that challenge that you're, you can, you can solve for that C level. Um, yeah. I think that's the most important. So I guess, you know, is there a specific profile that you look at, you know, or what are their profiles for that C level individual? Profile? Uh, yeah. It's pretty hard to say. It depends if they're CFOs or CIOs or CXOs or COOs. They all have their challenge, but it all, all resonates. And more and more now, the CEOs, the C-suite are all talking to each other. Yes. Especially being remote, they'll reach out. So what do you think? Because they don't have access to all of them always at a will to go into the boarding room, boardroom for five minutes and talk about it or call them on their phone. So they have to try to leverage each other. So they resort to each other for advice. So um, the profile, it's, it's again, uh, based on their industry, you, you dare to be different when you approach yeah. them. Don't always talk about what you think they want to hear, but do your research before. Like take the time. It's more about quality than it's quantity. If you have five, prospects with a conversation that matters that you can advance because I always talk about initially it was always about you know get the interest in a meet now it's about get the interest in a conversation yeah right then and there just five minutes book them for 15 minutes easy to sell 15 minutes on the virtues of something that they go oh yeah yeah that make that makes sense if you have some ideas you want to share with me I'll give you 15 minutes. Don't try to sell them on the, the, per, the virtues of an hour. You're never going to get it, especially now. So it's sell on the interest of their problems, their issues. Again, like you said, now we, you, what yeah, is it yeah. about you? Like, I, I want to know, I want to help you. And if you're going to call them, know something about them really well, their industry, their company, and the individual know something about all three of those. You know, the fact that you're a tennis pro, I'm a former squash pro, and I write to you and I, want to, I talk about squash, it doesn't matter to you. But if I say, Roger Federer has a coach, get a coach, you and I will relate because it's sports in general. Uh, so it, it's, it's a mix of your maturity, your relevance, and your timing. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because, you know, nowadays with all the different social channels and LinkedIn, I mean, the interest of that C-level is, is at your disposal. You can literally go on a LinkedIn profile and find out what do they like? Do they like golf? Do they like tennis? Do they like, you know, you know aerobics, yoga, et cetera. So you got to find that one nugget. And I'll, I'll give you an example of something that I had our sales team do. And it was, it was last year was we had our sales team when the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I had my sales team write that in the subject line to the C-level people in Kansas City. Because now you have the people in Kansas City thinking, oh, they're all very happy about the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, and you could relate to them. So I think finding that nugget, and I think a lot of people don't do that, which is kind of going to lead me, I guess, to the next question I have for you, Danny. And I, and I, I know the answer to this. You know, what matters most to the C-suite? I know that different people have different buyers' personas, we like to call them. I know, you know, if I'm a VP of sales or a national sales manager, I might be more interested in getting my sales reps demos. But what matters to the C-suite? Is it just revenue or is it more than just that? Well, how do you achieve revenue? One of the most important things I have found is customer experience. Yes. And all of, the, all of the factors that affect positively customer experience, the CX. Now we're talking about DX, the digital experience. But <laughs> ultimately, if a, the journey of a buyer, a customer, a client uh, engages with the organization called Auto Close and everything is fluid, there's maturity in the exchange, there's uh, politeness, there's expediency, there's relevance, uh, they don't claim, claim that they know everything or that they can resolve everything, but if there is a problem, they will, they will fix it and they will get back to you. So maturity, I think maturity is a, an overriding theme with, um, with C-suite, be mature. And that's what they want for their clients. 
They're concerned about making sure that the journey, the promise, right, the promise the company makes to the customer, delivering on the customer promise. So the experience. Of course, the CFO is not going to worry so much about that. He's going to look at the finality. All of this work, I look at the three ways. A COO I worked with for five years, he said, I look at the three parts. There's the commercial side, there's the efficiency side, and then there's the innovation side. So if commercial is everything, is marketing, sales, et cetera. Efficiency is produced at a reasonable dollar. And then innovation is upsell, cross-sell, continue to provide value throughout the journey of the client with you. So why do people stay with you? Is the experience they have. They Yes. Um, well, here's a question. I, I know I can see a lot of our clients here at the and I think they'll probably want to know this answer from you, Denise. So everyone has their own cadence. We have, you know, there's different multi-channel, there's phone, there's social, there's email, there's all these different channels. But when you're building out a cadence and you're building those touch points for the C-suite, do you go and target that C-suite differently than you would somebody that might be a manager or a director? So what are the, or how does the cadence change? And I guess, what are the, you know, the how to do's um, that you would say are the most important things that you have to have in those cadences, especially when you're targeting those C-suite, those CEOs, those, those presidents, those business owners, et cetera? Well, we all know that you have to have a decent, short, precise email that speaks to you, you, Mr. or Mrs., or as you said, not we, to the voice, the telephone. If you're afraid of the phone, do not get into C-suite prospecting because you're never going to make it. If there's not a vocal connection between two human beings, much less on a Zoom, I do all my prospecting as much as possible getting people on Zoom. I want them to look at me to see the trusting factor, the human factor. Uh, LinkedIn, connect yep. with LinkedIn, but be low profile, be polite, be non-pitchy. You know, it's all about just connecting H to H. That's where it is. But then now with how do you get to hyper personalize is you have to personalize. So try uh, a video. Like I said to you before, you can use this and do a video on LinkedIn, leave a, a smile of your face and say, I'm looking forward to speaking with you. I know you're busy, I'm trusting and I'm 100% conf confident that we will eventually speak. Dare be different, the purple cow, you know, from Seth Godin. Like stand out, be, dare be different, they like that. They show, it shows your, uh, your flexibility of spirit, your, your service, you're, you're oriented toward trying to reach them and you try different things and it's edutaining, it's infotaining. You know, they're hard, hard at work. And if you approach them differently and say, you know, this one will get my attention because it's all about attention retention at that point. But you got to have a combo approach. As you know, I'm a fan of Tony. He's a partner of mine with Sales IQ and it's multi-touch combo prospecting a number of different touch points on a given prospect because you never know which one he's going to respond to or she will respond to. Yeah. And, and one thing I find, you know, looking over and reading over and analyzing cadences and emails all the time is people, be, people use their kids. They're too salesy. They, 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 you know, I'll tell write their content or their initial email. It's like you're writing a whole novel to your prospect where ideally I always tell people your initial email should only be 75 to 125 words, no more. And your follow-up emails in that cadence should only be 50 to 75 words because I always tell people, you're not going to get someone to send you a check over email. You have to, at some point, get on the phone with them. So you want to use that platform to engage. And then throughout that engagement, I love using LinkedIn because you can do those social touches. Now you can not only, you can do things that are intangible. You could like, you could comment on a post, you can endorse where you're not actually sending Denis an email, but Denis is seeing on their newsfeed, oh, Sean Finder liked your post, Sean Finder comment on your post. So that time when you actually call that C-suite person or that time where you email them that third follow-up, they've already seen Denis' name six times. So that's, that, that, that's what I've found that's really worked. What do, you, do, you, do you believe in those short, sweet emails, Denis? Yeah, even less, <laughs> even less. Sometimes I'll say, 
like I'm dealing with clients who are dealing with predictive analysis for environmental impact in, in mines, water uh, treatment in cities across in Asia Pacific and the odor and all that stuff. So worried about your, your compliance with the community or with the municipality. Oh, it's talk about my subject, right? Uh, not sure if it's a fit for you, you take it away from them. Would you allow me five or 10 minutes? That's all. I know a guy in California for the North American team who did that, wasn't the most eloquent, but was extremely targeted at the problems that their VPs and directors of those particular industrial installations had. And it connected and all these bright salespeople who thought they were bright said, this guy is, is the least eloquent of us, but he got the essence of the message. So it's not so much about being super eloquent with big words, but getting to the essence of what bothers them that you can, and take it away. Like I spoke with a senior VP in Ohio about three weeks ago. He says, I closed the biggest deal in my career at a moment where I didn't give a hoot. I didn't care. Yeah. Take, the, take it away. When he wrote, the tone in his email was a bit more relaxed. So people got to take a chill pill and just sit back and want to engage with people in a conversation. Get the interest in a conversation. So what will sprout that conversation has got to be something that they are concerned about. Again, do your research and get back to how does that fit now if we twist it around and say, how do you do that with automation? Can you do that with automation? That's the question, right? Yeah. And I know we, 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 we've touched on this and um, I know a lot of people have differences of opinion on this. Um, when people ask, you know, what is more important, automation or personalization? And I know personally for, for especially for the C-suite, I, I would say personalization, but I would say if you're not working C-suite, if you're working more lower level decision maker, it might be automation to get as many out as you can. What is your opinion. I, I, I believe you're on the same page with me that personalization is obviously the most important thing with C-suite because they want to feel like they want to feel like you actually spent some time doing your due diligence to get to know them. Yeah. Well, uh, our dear friend, Daryl Prell said to me the other day, he says, uh, start with a template, then personalize it. So maybe for that lower level where you need to have some structure, you may want to do that. Just start with a template. But, you know, all buyers, even you and I, we get prospected by people all the time. And I see it and I say, yeah, template, the template, template. It's all templated. Yeah. So, and I respond to them. And curiously enough, I get no response from them. And then I know a friend of mine in Australia, Wayne Maloney, who wrote to me last week. And he says, I reached out to this guy. And he said, what? what? He didn't even know who he was. And he's the one who had sent a LinkedIn pitch. Yeah. He didn't even know it was in a, it's in a machine. It's lost, you know, in Nunu land. So you got to, you know, people get upset and it's very tiring and very uh, a waste of energy to have all these, these messages sent to you, but you don't follow up. So again, dare be different, try different things, go to Instagram or even Facebook and see if they're there, leave a message there. You know, you don't expect like Tony Hughes says to me, he says, the guy gets, a prompt on his SMS, then he gets a phone call, then he sees LinkedIn, then he sees the email, all Sean Fender writing to me, geez, I'll give him some time of day because you're trying to reach him sincerely. And if you don't get it the first time, it's all good. Try it again. It's not because they don't like you. They don't even know you. Yeah. Well, just, I, yeah, no, I, I, and I always tell people, I, I tell my, even my sales people, I go, guys, you're, if you're in sales, you need to be, in the middle of persistent to annoying. You can't be annoying, but you have to be persistent. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong if somebody goes, you know, Sean, you followed up me two, three times. That's my job. I'm in sales. Your, your job in sales, guys, is to be persistent. So if you feel like you're annoying, obviously stop. But you want to be in that middle zone where you might be a little bit annoying because at the end of the day, you're judged on hitting quota. You're judged on bringing revenue. You're judged on getting appointments. You're judging qualifying those opponents. So make sure you, um, you focus on, on being persistent. Yeah. And uh, automation is not annoying. It has no tone. <laughs> exactly. You want so, tone. You want tone. A hundred percent. Negative or bad, but you want tone to, to show that you're actually a human being at the other end. Yeah. 
And looks like we have a question. So like someone's asking, what are the best channels to communicate to the C-suite? Is it phone? Is it email? Is it social selling? And, and I know personally, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes people do is they rely on one channel. Nowadays, I would almost recommend in your sequence or cadence, you have all three channels. You have that email, five, you see, but, but you, you definitely want to do that social and you definitely want to put in those phone calls. So I guess, what would you say? I'm, I, I, I'm thinking Denise going to say phone, but what is the most important channel that you believe to communicate to the C-suite? Zoom right now. Yeah, that's if true. You bring them to Zoom. You got the facial expressions and sincerity. Uh, I just got booked yesterday by the regional vice president for all of the, one of the big six banks here in Quebec. I'm going to be speaking to 12 different vice presidents in Quebec province on prospecting skills to help their business developers to finance companies, right? They, they approach and they prospect. And uh, the VP with whom I've had a relationship for a year and a half, I didn't quit on her, you know, and she says, I'll bring you eventually. The, I'm going to hire a professional next, uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'm meeting with him to help me craft a really nice, well-developed video yeah. that I'm gonna email to all of them about three weeks before I meet with them on the 8th of September, and just to warm and humanize my, my presentation, probably be 35, 40 seconds, but I look forward to me, like I could, could craft it, but I'd rather hire a professional because it's that much worth it to me. We're talking 12 vice presidents, right? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. So I so use that, a video, so the phone, the video, anything where your human voice you know, uh, in the book Combo Prospecting, there's a, a sentence uh, where Tony says, not even 2030 artificial intelligence can beat the transcendental power of the human voice. Yeah. And it's true. It's true. Well, guys, I, I, we wanted to keep this about 20 minutes. So let's open up some questions. It looks like we have a few more here. We're going to answer some of your questions. This is going to be recorded, guys. So if you have any questions after, um, I'll actually provide you in the follow-up email, Denise's email and contact information. Actually, we'll have Denise leave it here. But let's get to another question. So we had, you know, what would you recommend personalizing when putting a C-suite into a sequence? Well, I mean, I would say the one thing that, that I know for sure is when Denise mentioned earlier is you have to find that nugget. What is that interest? What is that one sentence word that you can differentiate that from every other person that's cold emailing that person on that day? So I would say personalizing, obviously, you always want to do by first name, um, knowing their company, their position, but finding one, you know, one interest will definitely help that sequence. But Denis, I'd love to hear if there's anything I'm missing um, that you can personalize. Well, you said you mentioned something really uh, worthy, uh, respect worthy a few minutes ago about LinkedIn. Yeah. If you are connecting or reaching out to someone and they seem to fit the profile of vice president of sales, for instance, and you see him or her make a comment in a specific discussion where you also participated, copy paste her comment. Yes. Put it into a LinkedIn message is, I particularly enjoyed this comment you yes. made. The person is going to say, wow, they took the time to read my comment and bring it to bear in our discussion. We have to remember professional sales is also creativity. Yep. We are script writers. We are it's a performance profession like Daryl and I talked about in a webinar before. Sales is a performance profession, not a knowledge profession. Yeah. Um, guys, if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask them here. But, you know, Denis, you know, we, we, we said we're going to be 20 minutes. We're already at 25. Um, if anyone here wants to, you know, get in touch with you, ask you any other questions, because I know a lot of the people here today are, looks like auto close clients and probably doing sequences all the time to the C-level, what's the best way, your LinkedIn, maybe email, maybe just provide that to the audience? Yeah, it's Denis Champagne, so it's, uh, that's my name. It's French, D-E-N-I-S, and Champagne. I think you put it into the, uh, to the recording, I guess. Yep. Uh, and they, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, Lotus.com, L-O-T-U-S-C-O-M-M.com. Lotus.com is my website. And uh, Sprinter14 on Twitter, that's a former <laughs> Sprinter. Sprinter 14, you can reach me that way, uh, you know, and be more than happy to exchange, give them any points of views or some tips. And, uh, you know, 
be more than happy to exchange with anyone if they need some help, you know, in, in exchange and discussions. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sharon. Appreciate it. Well, Denny, thank you so much for coming today. You know, I know we've talked, we talk a lot about different prospecting tips for sea level. And I hope everyone here today, you know, got a lot out of it. I think even though it was just a 20 minute webinar today, I think a lot of good tips and tricks on how to sell, scale, um, and personalize your, your messaging to that sea level. We will be recording this. Um, so you guys will see get an email with a recording if you want to share that. Um, but thank you guys for attending. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, it was uh, very informative. And um, I hope everyone has a good day. And then we will uh, send you guys an invite for our upcoming webinars. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can reach out to me as well. Sean, S-H-A-W-N at autoclosewithak.com. And I'm very active on LinkedIn. Denis, thank you so much once again. Thank you, John. Likewise.